Hi there, welcome to your workout today. Today's workout is gonna go in the reformer on the mat category. However, I'm gonna be showing you how you can utilize a heavier weight in the instance that you feel like you want a little bit more challenge for your upper body, or you feel like having a little bit more variety in your workout. You just need one weight. Um, my weight is 10 pounds. If you don't have a ring, don't worry. You can use just a typical dumbbell and just hold either side of your dumbbell. Get creative with the amount of weight you choose. Um, and that's that. So let's get started. If you'd like to open up the Spotify link in the description below, we will push play together in three, two, and one. All right, so we are gonna start standing. You are gonna be holding your weight. Again, if it is a dumbbell, you can just have it in your hands. Stand with your feet about shoulder distance apart. You're gonna curl your chin to your chest and you're gonna let that weight pull you down. And then from there, roll all the way up. Okay, we'll do that a few more times, curling your chin to your chest, rolling down. And then slight bend in the knees as you roll that spine all the way up. All right, last time. Okay, just checking and seeing how does your body feel? Where do you feel tight? Now joining your feet together, you're gonna to hold, if it's a dumbbell, hand on either side, stand with your feet together, and you're gonna take a big step out to one side, come back in, and then to the other. All right. So just starting to get those legs going. You're gonna press your hands inwards towards your weight, and then you're gonna to start to reach forward and pull back in. Okay, so you'll notice the further your weight goes away from your center, the heavier it's gonna feel. That's no different than our traditional Pilates stuff, right? If you ever wanna increase intensity, challenge to your core, your upper body, you bring your extremities further away from your center. All right, let's do this for four. And three, two, all right, last one. Okay, now you just stand with your feet hip distance apart. You reach your arm out in front and you go one, two, like a steering wheel. Oh my gosh, this one is so hard for me. Okay, if you've got that dumbbell, you're just turning one hand on top of the other, keep going. I'll show you what that would look like. So you're just turning one on top of the other. Okay, last four. Three, two, and one. Awesome. Take a little break, wiggle your shoulders out. We're gonna repeat that. So you start with your weight right in front of your chest. Let's step out to the left first. Here we go, out and in. Okay, now that your body knows where it's going, maybe taking a bigger step, really pushing from one side to the next. I feel so strange, I haven't worn all black in a long time. I feel like I'm in a uniform. <laughs> Four more. Last two. All right, friends, last one. We come back to center. Reach your arms out in front, steering wheel. Eight. Good, seven. Okay, strong through your posture, so ribs are closed, chest is forward. Four. Good, three. Two. Oof, last one. Oh my goodness, relax your arms. Now you're gonna hold your weight right in front of yourself. Stand with your toes apart, your heels together, pulling the weight up, pressing down. Up, down. Oh, relief to, my little chicken arms are happy to do this one. Remember with this one, we're gonna lead with the elbows. Now usually we would push our dumbbells together in this. But here, if you're holding a kettlebell or a ring like me, you can kind of think about pulling apart. If you're holding a dumbbell, you can push inwards. Two more. Last one. Great job. Now you're gonna hold either side. Step your feet a little bit wider. I'm gonna to turn to face sideways. We're gonna do a squat. So your hips are hinging down, arms reaching forward, and pull back up, reaching out. So just like the footwork that we do in the reformer on the mat, 
incorporating this heavier weight might do a few things. You might notice your heart rate elevates just a little bit depending on the weight you choose. Last three, two, last one. Okay, I'm gonna show you this with the uh, dumbbell first, the last exercise in this little flow. You're holding either side and you're gonna go around your head. I want you to keep going the same direction. Keep going. Take note of what direction it is because on the second side of the flow, you are going to do the opposite. Okay, for four, three, making a personal note to myself that I'm going clockwise. Last one. Amazing. Now, we start from the top. You're gonna to stand with your toes apart, your heels together. Okay, zipping up those legs, pulling up that zipper, pressing down, pulling up, pressing down, good. Again, leading with those elbows, elbows high, posture tall. Just because you're holding a heavier weight than what we typically would do, doesn't mean all that work that we do and Pilates goes out the window. It's still here. It might just be harder. Okay, last three and two. All right, we've got that squat. So you're gonna hold either side of your weight. Stand with your feet slightly turned out. Your weight goes forward, you bend, pull up and in, reach. So we commonly do this with that towel. How can you think about pulling to the floor, pressing away from the floor? Four more. Good, and three. Okay, you can go lower than me. You cannot go as low as me, it's up to you. Last one, make it count. All right, then you're just standing comfortably and you're going around your head. Oh, this is the weird thing. Go the opposite direction. I think this is the most ridiculous. <laughs> we dedicate this to John. Let's see if when he edits the video, he notices. Leave him a comment in the comment section. Say, John, I love your move. He loves this one. Three more. Good, two. Awesome, last one. Ah, okay, shoulders definitely feeling the heat. Okay, so now for this next one, you're gonna hold that weight in front of your chest. You're gonna stand, okay, some information. You need enough room to be able to reach your leg back and you also need to be able to step backwards. So essentially you just need enough room to step backwards. You're holding your weight in front of your chest. You're standing with your feet parallel. Let's step back with that right foot first and then come back. We're gonna repeat, right foot steps back. So now what I notice when I do this without weight is people tend to leave their torso forward, okay? So I want you to feel that weight or visualize that weight, excuse me, moving through space. It's moving backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Three more, good for two. All right, for one, you're gonna hold straight in your back leg, hold your weight in the right arm, bend your elbow, hinge forward, brace with your left, and then straighten and bend. Okay, squaring off those shoulders. If you've been following along with no weight, you can hold both your dumbbells for this one in your hand. Okay, four more times. Good, and three, two. All right, now from there, you're gonna hold the weight in both of your hands. You're gonna straighten that front leg. You're gonna hinge forward and come up. You know, if you're driving through the prairies, okay, I don't know where in the world you are, but imagine you're driving in the prairies, it's farmland, and they have that like big machine. I just sound like such a silly person. <laughs> but this is what I picture, I'm going up and down. I have no idea what that thing is called, so I shouldn't have brought it up. 
You can also pretend you're that little bird, dipping your beak into the water, coming back up. Counterbalancing your head with your foot. Last two. And last one. Awesome, okay. Give your leg a little bit of a shake out. Thank you for dealing with those ridiculous comments. I'm gonna change views, I'm gonna turn. You're gonna hold that weight in front of your chest. Okay, we're gonna step back with that left foot. Stepping back and using that extra bit of weight to give you awareness of your body going backwards, forwards. Backwards, forwards. Weight's a little bit harder to manage. Three more. Good, two. All right, we hold it back. Straighten that back leg. Change so the weight is in your left hand, elbow bent, brace with right. You straighten and bend. Now you might start to notice when you work with a heavier weight, you have more of a temptation to swing. That's okay, but just think like a rolling like a ball. We do use momentum, but we control it, right? We're not like flailing around ever. Okay, last four, three, two, collarbones wide, shoulders square, last one. Okay, now you're gonna straighten that back leg, or sorry, straighten your front leg, hold the weight in your hands, you dip forward and then up. Ooh. Okay, we've got 10 in total. How can you be efficient, right? Timing is important. If I go too quick with my foot, it's gonna throw me off. If I go too quick with my head, it's gonna throw me off. Where do we know that from? That's our teaser. Right? If we lift those legs too slow or too quick, it's not going to work. Last three. Good. And two. Last one. Awesome. Give that hard working leg a shake. Okay. Amazing. So now we're going to come down. <laughs> like, Let's come down onto our mats. Have a seat. Okay, our half roll back. <clears throat> I really want you to listen to your body here. Um, so if you feel like you need to ditch the weight, please do. What's really important is that you nail your shape of your half roll back. So if you're leaning back, your lower back will not like this extra bit of weight. So please keep that in mind. That is a pelvic curl. And if you're not sure, try a few, go slowly and then ditch the weight if you want to. Let's have the feet hip distant apart for this one today. Sit up as straight as you can, weight in front of your chest. You're gonna curl your waistband towards the floor behind you and reach your arms out in front. Pull back in. Again, timing is everything. You're gonna gradually reach your weight forward as you curl back and then come up. And if you nail that timing, it actually makes this easier. And if you nail that position, it actually makes it easier. So let's try three without. Okay, good. And notice how you have to be a little bit more connected. You have to hold your core a little bit more. I know that wasn't three. I wanted the weight to come back. All right, now we're gonna roll back. I'm gonna join my legs together. You can do the same if you want. Bring your weight a little closer to you and twist right, left. Right, left, for four. Knees stay together, they don't twist. Two. All right, come back up. I'm gonna separate my feet. We're gonna roll back again. Legs join together, left first. Okay. Out of the corner of your eye, self-correct and make sure that your legs stay relatively still. Last one, each direction. Good work, come back up to sit. So now I'm gonna scoot forward so that I'm in my middle of my mat and I'm gonna lay down on my back. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna have my uh, ring 
kind of resting on my pelvis. So if it's a dumbbell, it'll be kind of across where your uh, waistband just below your belly button would be. You can play with it a bit. You're gonna press your hips up and then lower back down, pressing up. So we're not articulating the spine. We're doing that more focused press, more neutral. Okay, remember if your lower back is starting to feel a little bit more tired than you want, that's your pelvis position. So I would suggest lowering your hips down a bit, making sure your ribs aren't going into extension. The extra bit of weight, even if it's only five pounds or 10 pounds is gonna show you what your positions are doing. Okay, now we're gonna keep the hips lifted and you're gonna lift and lower your heels. If your instincts tell you to walk your feet in, do it. Press into those big toes. Keep that pubic bone pulling towards your belly button. Last four, three, two, one. Awesome work, lower those hips down. You're gonna straighten your legs and reach your arms straight up to the ceiling hard flexing your feet. Now this is your roll up, but it's a bit different, okay? So you're gonna do your normal roll up, but then when you sit up, I just want you to pull the weight into your chest, and then you're gonna roll down. Weight to the ceiling, roll up, pull the weight into your chest, isn't that nice? Curl tailbone under, roll down. So this is a workout that you can save and come back to if you wanna play with the amount of weight you hold in your hands. That's kind of the purpose of this workout. So then you can make choices in your reformer on the mat classes and kind of swap out different, different weights just to add variety, add different challenges. Heavier weights doesn't necessarily mean better or harder. And same thing with light weights. When we're working out at home, it's really important to give our brains uh, structure, but also variety, so we keep things interesting. Okay, I wanna do one more because I'm kind of scared for the next one. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the goal here is to kind of, it's like, a, it's like a teaser, half, not half roll back, double leg stretch combo situation, okay? So my strategy usually is to curl back a little bit and then I reach my arms and my legs out at the same time. So you can see how my legs are a little lower than they usually are for my teaser, okay? So it's just gonna be an isometric hold and I want you to play with it a bit. If you have lighter weights, you might be able to just hold your teaser. Okay, so I'm gonna go from that half roll back and then I'm simultaneously gonna extend my arms and my legs out at the same time. Now, feel free to go into it a few times. Um, I had to practice this a bunch just to see like what height of my legs I need to be at. Let's hold four more seconds. And then we're gonna cross the legs, sit up tall and just do a little mini baby twist. Okay, reset your bones. Let's do it again, all right? So feet, curl, arms and legs out. Nail that timing, hold. Four, three, two, one, cross. Baby twist. Little twist. Cool, last time. Feet, curl, arms and legs. It's like you're holding a big suitcase above your head. Where are you gonna go? Where would you love to go? If you could travel anywhere, where would it be? All right, come up. Lovely work, okay, little baby twist. Okay, now just to give ourselves a little bit of a break, kind of, sit up straight, reach your weight up towards the ceiling and then press down and up. Okay, if this is a dumbbell you're holding, either side. Okay, ribs are closed. This is exactly like we do in our reformer on the mat. So if you like it with this heavier weight, you can swap this out in class. This is something I've been working with uh, for my Tuesday evening live class, you know, giving options of swapping out for, a lot of people in that class have sets of fives Last two. 
Okay, last one. All right, so I almost knocked myself in the head. Now we're gonna do a teaser and it's teaser two. So teaser two is legs lowering and lifting, but this might help you. It might not, it might. So what I'm gonna do is get myself set up in my teaser position. I'm gonna take my weight, I'm gonna hold it above my head and then I'm gonna lower and lift my legs, okay? So let's do that. You're going to curl tailbone under Get your legs up. You can rest them on a bench if you, no, you can't. You're gonna reach your arms up towards the ceiling. You're gonna lower and lift. The heavy weight is gonna counterbalance the weight of your legs. So for some of you, especially longer legged individuals, so make it easier. Two more. Ooh boy, last one. Amazing work, okay. This is gonna go off to the side and we're gonna do a swan. Come onto your stomach. Give yourself a little wiggle. Have your feet shoulder distant apart. Forearms come almost off your mat. Okay, sliding chin away from the chest. Taking your time. Lifting up. Remember, your practice is for you. And you can go anywhere in your swan you know, between just barely lifting up to completely straightening your elbows. So I want you to check in with your lower back. And if it feels a bit tired, maybe you're just gonna go here. Yep. If you're feeling like your hip flexors are craving some traction, then maybe you wanna go up this high. The choice is always yours. And my mission is to help you make choices so that you are really, really serving yourself. So you always think like what I say is always a suggestion. It's not a instruction. Okay, so now we're gonna bring the legs all the way together if you want more inner thigh work, a little bit apart if you want it to back off a little bit. You're gonna bring hands layered, forehead connects. We're gonna lift up just barely and back down eight times. Lift up just barely and lower. Think about curling your pubic bone down into the floor, creating a little bit more space through that lower back so your upper back can float freely. Last time, lift up, we hold little pulses. 10, eight, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax down, hands by armpits. Go ahead and sit back to child's pose. Great, okay. Now you can swap this out for a full uh, tricep push-up like we usually would do in our Contrology series. Um, but I would love to revisit this little hack here. So you come onto all fours, hands and knees. You're gonna straighten your right leg out and you're gonna lift it up. Now, aim your eyes a little bit forward. So if you're at the top end of your mat, aim your eyes like two feet in front of your mat. You're going to lift your leg, lower your forehead to the ground and come back up. So you're really propelling your forehead forward. Narrow elbows. Now, if you don't want it to be as intense, you can play with what this foot does. So remember earlier we were doing that thing that I can't name, oh my gosh. I promise I'm qualified to teach you. Three more. Good, two. Oof, last one. All right, come to a high kneeling and just do three circles. <sighs> Ready, other side. Okay, so you come down, straighten your opposite leg out, leg goes up, forehead goes down. Okay, really feeling, oh, a seesaw, a teeter-totter. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. Oh my gosh. Okay, aim for two or three more. Oh, last one. Oh my goodness, friends, come up to that high kneeling position, three circles in the reverse. Ah, hands come down, toes tuck under, hips lift up, pedal out your feet.
Awesome work. Reach both heels to the ground, push your chest towards the floor. Okay, take a moment. Finding stillness in your body. I hope that you feel so much better. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Walk your hands to your feet. Let yourself hang upside down like a rag doll. And then so slowly, like your pelvis is a wheel that's turning, it's gonna roll you up bone by bone, bit by bit. And then stay where you are, maybe even close your eyes. I would love for you to ball up your fists, create all this tension, and then just let it all go. Do that again, ball up your fists, create tension, and then let it go. Last time, no one's here to judge you, so just take all of your tension and let it out. And thank you so much for moving with me. I hope there were some great ideas in there of how you can add a little bit of heavier weights to our reformer on the mat classes. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to, again, comment below, send me an email or a DM. Bye.